Okay. Calling the roll, Mr. Hauser. Here. Ms. Simon. Here. Ms. Baker. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Tuma. Here. Mr. Gallagher. Here. Mr. Schron. Here. Ms. Conwell. Here. Ms. Brown. Here. Council President Brady is absent this evening, and Council Vice President Jones. Here. And I'll make a motion that we excuse our Council President. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Our Council President is excused. Let's, let's stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this moment, we will have our silent meditation, and we can each reflect on our own personal reflections. Thank you. At this time, Jean, has anyone signed in for public comment? Yes, Mr. Vice President. Uh, Mr. Owen Beckles, if you'll step up to the podium, please. Yes, my name is Owen Beckles. I would just like to talk about being disabled in my experience in this state and in this county. Um, when I got sick, I had to go and apply for my long-term disability through my job. My job took two years to give me a check through the insurance company, then another year to give me another check and canceled me. Okay, now you may say, okay, that happened, but what, how does that affect you? Here's what happens. You come into town, You, because I just moved into town. I hadn't been in town six months and I took sick. Okay, now I've got to try and provide for my family. I've got to try and keep my mind straight so that my family can hang in too. My wife was the only one working, making hardly any money. And when we, when we first moved up here, we lived in Mahoning County. We've been up here for about 10 years, 11 years. And it's been extremely rough. You go to the Department of Insurance and explain your, your plight about how you were unjustly done. And they tell you that you, <laughs> you, there's nothing that we're going to do. They're right. The insurance company's right. They just snatched a check from out, out from under me. And I need that check. Social Security saying that it's popped that. It's not safe for me to drive a car 20 minutes to work, let alone work an eight-hour job. The laws in this country need to be changed to be fair for the disabled. There is no legitimate excuse that I see for what happened to me. I went to um, Congress, Congressman, or oh, excuse me, yeah, Congresswoman, what's her name? Forgive me. Marsha Fudge. Marsha Fudge, yes. And I explained my plight. Took her two weeks. <laughs> her assistant called me back with a nervous voice on the phone telling me that there's nothing that they can do. I, it's like, where's the justice? Where's the fairness? People look at the news and they say, well, you know, this is a shame that this person went off the deep end. That's a shame that person went off the deep end. 
They don't understand why. They don't understand why. And every day I have to fight to keep my mind on track and not take this as a defeat. Because to this point, I am owed over $200,000 in benefits. That could help me to get a house because my wife is disabled too. She's now in CCU at Hillcrest Hospital. Everything is a battle. Okay, thank you. Okay. And the next speaker is Ms. Lou. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for being considerate to one of my disability for once today. The, the podium is lower and the microphone is actually within my reach. <laughs> Last time I came here, I actually asked all the audience to look at me. Lots of discriminations are from misunderstanding. However, same thing. Nobody asked for being disabled but the discrimination on people with disabilities are so severe. All the people staying in homeless shelter, you can see them. Lots of them are in the same route, just like the gentleman standing here earlier. He's actually lucky. He can still come to talk to you for all the people already fallen into the helpless situations. The society has been rejecting them even the homeless shelter system actually is rejecting homeless people. This is serious. If we don't really get on this, we will have way more than 23,000 homeless people even just inside the city of Cleveland. Don't even say the whole county. If we want to have a workforce, if we want the economy to grow, we want the county to go back to all the old glorious days, these things have to be improved. Unfortunately, all the accumulation already gone bad and added up till now. So it will be up to the people you hear now to help. Thank you for your help. Some, thank you for your support. But some of the things are like this still happens day to day. That's part of the reason why homeless population has been increased actually rapidly. Even there's an organization called Frontline Service declaring they are decreasing homeless people. Unfortunately, that is not true. I'm still here. So you know, the problem is still here. I'm not really the problem. I'm trying to get a solution too. However, by just only a few people working on it, this will not go fast enough. We do have let people vote, so you guys can represent all the voices to get things improved. Election is coming. I hope you guys will all get reelected as also the people in the, uh, on the state level. We, we hope all the good people, all the people caring about people's life, they will get elected or reelected. Thank you very much. That's it. Okay, thank you. Approval of minutes. Can I have a motion to approve our, our minutes from September 25th? Moved and seconded, all, any discussion? Not all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Ayes have it, the minutes are approved. Announcements from the council vice president. Uh, Mr. Sean Walker is a member of the Cuyahoga County Advisory Committee on Persons with Disabilities and will address council. Hello, I am here to thank the Council of Cuyahoga County for passing the resolution recognizing October as Disability Employment Awareness Month. The theme this year is Empowering All. I personally feel empowered by the employment I currently have 
which encompasses two part-time jobs. First, a little about me. My name is Sean Walker. I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at eight months of age, even though most of the right side of my brain cells died shortly after I was born. Yes, you could say I'm half-brained. I feel very blessed by God that I have been given enough intelligence that I was able to get a college degree. My biggest challenge in college, and still today with people who do not know me, is my inability to be understood. I fought this all through high school until I was convinced almost forced to get a communication device. I credit my device with helping me be able to get a degree, get my jobs, deliver messages on biblical topics, and advocate for people with disabilities. Statistics indicate that over 90% of people with disabilities are either unemployed or underemployed. I include myself in this number. Due to my medical needs which are very involved, most companies will not hire me for a full-time job. In order to work, I need full-time aides at home to get me up and out the door to work. I would also need assistance on the job with lunch and bathroom breaks. Right now, I have a waiver that pays for the home care, and if my income was too high, I would lose the waiver, and therefore the help. In my case, and for a lot of others, people with disabilities get jobs by word of mouth. Both of my part-time jobs were recommended to me through prior relationships. I am currently employed by Youth Challenge in Cuyahoga County Board of DD. Youth Challenge is a nonprofit organization. They focus on adapted recreation for people with physical disabilities. I started as a participant with Youth Challenge when I was four years of age. Over the 27 years I have been with YC, I have served in every capacity that was available to me. I started as a participant doing sports three days a week for five hours a day. That included swimming, bowling, wheelchair soccer, flag football, and rock climbing. And it wasn't just sports. Just as important as sports is to YC, the social interaction plays a major part. I stayed in touch with them while I was away at college. After returning home from college, I was asked to become the first staff intern for Youth Challenge we developed the Youth Education and Leadership Program which helps YC alumni transfer from high school to whatever the next phase of their lives will be. Three years ago, YC connected me to Ada Cleveland, who asked me to speak on behalf of younger people with disabilities to talk about the work that still needed to be done for the Americans with Disabilities Act. I spoke in front of 500 people, which was the largest gathering ever of Waterville Wednesday. Four years ago, YC accepted a call from the United States Olympic Committee to become a Paralympic Sports Club. We now have six teams who compete in two seasons all over the Midwest. I coach our bocce team, which is adapted bocce. 
for the board of PD. I serve as one of five good life ambassadors. We make presentations throughout the county, educating anyone who wants our services on any disability related topic. It was through a friend of mine who was already a good life ambassador that I heard about the position. That is my story, but it is only one of many stories. Hopefully it shows each of you why Disability Employment Awareness Month is so important. Thank you again for passing this resolution and allowing me the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Uh, you, you truly are an inspiration, and and we want to recognize you and, and present a proclamation to you on uh, to commemorate October as Di uh, as Di Disability Employment Awareness Month. And Gene, if you have the proclamation, if you would. Can we thank you, Mr. Walker? At this time, are there any messages from our county executive? Yes, thank you. Uh, the right to vote shall be a fundamental right in Cuyahoga County. That's what our charter says in Article 14. Uh, today, early votes started. Um, I went to vote, and I can say from firsthand experience, it was very smooth and very well run at the Board of Elections. Uh, the early vote ballot applications that have been received by the Board of Elections as of yesterday totaled 126,480. That is compared to 118,300 four years ago, so it's a nice little increase from uh, four years ago. Uh, and uh, today the Board of Elections uh, sent or is sending out uh, the ballots to those who requested the uh, ballots early. Um, it's expecting, the board is expecting that early vote may actually exceed 160,000 this year, uh, which would also be a, a significant increase over the prior four years ago. Um, four years ago, the total voting in Cuyahoga County was something in the range of about 370,000, if I remember correctly. This year, they're expecting the total vote in Cuyahoga County to exceed 400,000. So uh, people are exercising their vote. That's a good thing. And, uh, and uh, I hope you'll all get out to vote soon. Thank you. All right. Legislation introduced by council. Consideration of a resolution of council for first reading and referral to committee. Resolution number 2018-0197, determining the services and programs that shall be provided and funded from the Veterans Services Fund in 2018, authorizing payments to various providers in the total amount of $367,128 for said services and programs for the period ending December 31, 2018. Economic development. Mr. President, may I please have my name added? Gene, if you would please add Councilman Miller's name. And mine also. Yes. And that is Councilman Schron and Councilwoman Sunny Simon. Committee report and consideration of a resolution of council for second reading adoption under suspension of rules. Can we have a motion to suspend the rules? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Resolution number 2018-0189, adopting various changes to the Cuyahoga County Non-Bargaining Classification Plan. Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, this ordinance updates the HR policies and procedure manuals um, procedure manual, which was recently overhauled back in March. The updates address a number of operational and legal issues that have been identified in the interim. The ordinance includes relatively minor amendments to a number of policies, including health care coverage policies, sick leave, vacation, and family medical leave policies, as well as 
exchange time, straight time, and holiday pay policies. All of these changes are intended to either clarify ambiguities in the existing manual and or provide greater flexibility for our county employees. The Department of Human Resources has asked that this item be approved on second reading so that these changes can go into effect before open enrollment begins. We have a substitution on page 77. Oh, <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. So this is, this is an amendment. This one is an amendment for which is on page 77. Thank you, Jean. And the amendment is on page 77 for the classification plans. I got ahead of myself. So we had to delete some um, classifications during our HR committee meeting last week. And so that is what this particular uh, particular resolution is for. So. If, if we can have a motion to accept the substitution. Proposed substitute. The proposed yes. substitution. And I will make the motion. And I'll second. Moved and, moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor of accepting the proposed substitute, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. And any further discussion? No. If not, not all those in favor of adopting the resolution on its merits, okay. may say aye. Aye. Uh, thank you. Ayes have it. All right. Legislation introduced by the executive. Consideration of resolutions for first reading adoption under suspension of rules. Mr. We Mr. have a motion to suspend. Mr. Vice President, I move to suspend. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Rules are suspended. Resolution number 2018-0198, amending the 2018-2019 biannual operating budget for 2018 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations for appropriation transfers and for cash transfers, amending resolution number 2018-0190, dated 9-25-2018, to reconcile appropriations for 2018. Moved to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. Mr. President. My colleagues, this is the regular monthly fiscal resolution. Questions have been sent to OBM and answered to our satisfaction. The questions and answers are on your desk. The proposed changes are routine and technical. I recommend passage on first reading suspension. There's no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2018-0199, accepting or rejecting the report containing findings and recommendations of fact finder Jared Simmer regarding negotiations between Cuyahoga County and Ohio Patrolmen's Benevolent Association for a collective bargaining agreement covering approximately 155 employees in the classification of deputy sheriff at the sheriff's department. Is there a motion to adopt? Move to adopt. Moved and seconded. Mr. President. Councilman. Do we need to amend and strike rejecting so it just needs, uh, so I so move that we strike rejecting so that it reads we're accepting. Second. Excellent. So this item was previously discussed in executive session. With that, do we now need a motion to accept? Let's make a motion to accept uh, this proposed amendment. Move it. Move it. <laughs> I, have I have listed a motion by Mr. Miller with a second by Mr. Gallagher. Excellent. So, motion to accept the proposed amendment. Just need a, a voice vote for the uh, proposed All amendment. Call. All right. So, we'll have a roll call at this time. This one would just be a voice vote okay, we'll for the forward. proposed amendment. All, right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. And you have to forgive me, I don't have my glasses on and I'm <laughs> it not going to work here. I, I've tried yeah. this before. All right. Gene, where are we right now? Mr. Vice President, mm -hmm. at this point, you would want to have um, uh, have a vote on um, adopting the resolution on its merits as amended. Uh, Councilman Tron and Councilwoman Conwell made the first and the second for uh, the merits. So we I think since you're accepting, you just need a voice vote. Let's, let's have a voice vote. <laughs> All right. Aye. 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 All right. 
Thank you. The eyes have it. All right. Now we'll move on to our next item. Resolution number 2018-0200, accepting or rejecting the report containing findings and recommendations of fact finder Dr. Harry Graham regarding negotiations between Cuyahoga County and Laborers International Union of North America, Local 860, for a collective bargaining agreement covering approximately 100 employees in various classifications at the Department of Health and Human Services, Cuyahoga Job and Family Services, and Division of Children and Family Services, and the Department of Information Technology. Correct, moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Excellent. Move to approve the yeah. move to approve the resolution as amended that we accept. Okay. So on the we're accepting the fact finder report, and that was a motion by Ms. Conwell and with a second by who? Ms. Brown? All right. Okay, and then um, everyone voted in favor of that, correct? Okay, and then on a motion to adopt the resolution on its merits as amended, and that was by Mr. Miller with a second by Mr. Schron. And you just need to have a voice vote on that, Mr. Vice President. Right, we'll have a voice vote at this time. Aye. 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 All right, and opposed, none it is now. Resolution adopted. All right. Okay. Consideration of resolution for first reading and referral to committee. Resolution number 2018-0201, making awards on requisition number 42565 to various providers, each in the amount not to exceed $400,000 for general architectural and engineering services for the period October, October 23rd, 2018 through October 22nd, 2021, as printed on the agenda. I refer to Public Works. Resolution number 2018-0202, making awards on requisition number 42571 to various providers, each in the amount not to exceed $350,000 for general mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, architectural, and engineering services for the period October 23rd, 2018 through October 22nd, 2021, as printed on the agenda. Referred to Public Works. Resolution number 2018-0203, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1600-242 with United Labor Agency Incorporated for operation of the Workforce Service Center, Job Seekers and Employer Services, and management of the on-the-job training program in connection with the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act for the period July 1, 2016 through June 30, 2019 for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $1,586,219. This will go to Education, Environment, and Sustainability Committee. Resolution number 2018-0204, authorizing an amendment to contract number 1600-288 with Ohio Guidestone for in-school and out-of-school youth programs in connection with the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act for the period July 1, 2016 through June 30, 2019 for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $1,157,343. This will also go to education. Resolution number 2018-0205, making an award on requisition number 42537 to Mental Health Services for Homeless Persons Incorporated, doing business as frontline service in the amount not to exceed $898,300 for operation of the Children Who Witness Violence Program for the period January 1, 2019 through December 31, 2021. Public safety. Resolution number 2018-0206, authorizing amendments to various agreements with Educational Service Center of Cuyahoga County for lease of space at various Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disability Centers for operation of Bright Beginnings programs, formerly known as Help Me Grow programs, for the period September 15, 2013 through September 14, 2018, to extend the time period to September 14, 2023, and for additional revenue, each in the amount not to exceed $5 as printed on the agenda. 
Refer to Public Works. Resolution number 2018-0207, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1700-168 with Child Care Resource Center of Cuyahoga County doing business as starting point for management, administration, and implementation of various supportive services for the Universal Pre-Kindergarten 2.0 program for the period August 1, 2017 through July 31, 2018 to extend the time period to December 31, 2018. 18 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $819,706. Refer to education. Committee reports and consideration of resolutions for second reading adoption under suspension of rules. Can we have a motion to suspend the rules? Mr. Vice President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The rules are suspended. Resolution number 2018-0192, confirming the county executive's appointment of the Honorable Michael Dillon Brennan to serve on the Cuyahoga County Planning Commission representing the Heights region for an unexpired term ending December 31, 2020. Moved, that. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, Mayor Brennan came before the Human Resources Appointment and Equity Committee expressing his desire and experience um, qualifications that he brings to serve to this in this uh, position, and I respectfully request my colleague's support. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes aye. have it. Resolution number 2018-0193, confirming the county executive's appointment of various individuals to serve on the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority Board of Trustees for various unexpired terms as printed on the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Vice Chair. This is... Um, this, these individuals, Mr. Justin Bibb came before the committee and Mr. Uh, Terrence Joyce submitted a letter expressing their desire to serve and, as well as their experience and qualifications that they would bring to the board. And I respectfully request my colleagues' support. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Resolution number 2018-0194, confirming the county executive's reappointment of Jennifer Crossman to serve on the Child Abuse and Child Neglect Regional Prevention Council of the Ohio Children's Trust Fund, representing the Great Lakes region for the term September 28, 2018 through September 27, 2020. Additionally, Council Member Conwell has requested to be a sponsor to this legislation. Move to that. Second. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Ms. Ms. Crossman came before us with a, um, a, a great recommendation by our colleague, uh, Councilman Dale Miller. And um, unless he has something to add, I would respectfully request uh, that we support her reappointment. My colleagues, Jennifer Crossman has served with distinction with me on the Great Lakes Regional Council on Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention. I have first-hand knowledge that she brings a wealth of knowledge and experience about the needs of children through her long service at DCFS. I strongly recommend her reappointment. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Resolution number 2018-0196, authorizing a revenue generating agreement with City of Cleveland, Cleveland Municipal Court, in the amount not to exceed $2,172,185 for legal services for indigent persons for the period January 1, 2018 through December 31, 2018. Additionally, Council Member Conwell has requested to be a sponsor to this legislation. Move to adopt. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? And Mr. Vice President, this came before the uh, committee. Um, these are dollars that Cleveland pays us back for services rendered through the, uh, through the, for the municipal court uh, with the public defender. Uh, the committee recommends adoption. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Consideration of a resolution for third reading adoption. Resolution number 2018-0184, authorizing an agreement of cooperation with City of Independence in connection with replacement of Old Rockside Road Bridge number 00.42 over the Cuyahoga River in the City of Independence and Village of Valley View, total estimated project cost $5,900,000. Motion to adopt. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, Mr. Vice President, um, this matter came before the uh, Public Works Committee a few weeks ago. And uh, in short, this is a um, uh, resolution to a uh, court matter, the Supreme Court of Ohio, um, uh, a judge that the county uh, has is responsible for uh, this project here. Um, that's 
kind of the end of story. So I would ask for my colleague's support on this. <laughs> it's just very simple. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. All right. A committee report and consideration of an ordinance for second reading adoption under suspension of rules. Can we have a motion to suspend the rules? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Ordinance number 2018-0011, providing for modifications to the Cuyahoga County Human Resources Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual, also known as the Employee Handbook, to be applicable to all county employees. Move to adopt. Second. This may sound familiar. This, <laughs> this ordinance updates the HR Policies and Procedure Manual which was recently overhauled back in March. The update addresses a number of operational and legal issues that have been identified in the interim. The ordinance includes relatively minor amendments to a number of policies, including health care coverage policies, sick leave, vacation, and family medical leave policies, exchange time, straight time, and holiday pay policies. All of these changes are intended to either clarify ambiguities in the existing manual or provide greater flexibility for our county employees. The Department of Human Resources has asked that this item be approved on second reading suspension so that these changes can go into effect before open enrollment again. I once again respectfully request the support of my colleagues on this ordinance. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Vice President, also Council Member Conwell is requested to be a sponsor to this item. All right. All right. At this time, are there any miscellaneous committee reports? Mr. President. Councilman Miller. My colleagues, finance and budget will meet at its regularly scheduled time on this coming Monday, October 15th at 1 p.m. At that time, we will hear the quarterly report on the ERP system, and we will also hear the $3.2 million in for a change order. So it's a very important meeting. I ask everybody to come and please be prompt. Also on Thursday, October 18th at 10.30 a.m., we will have the ERP work session update with Zig Brusens. Thank you. Any other reports? Economic development will meet on Monday at uh, 3 o'clock. HHS will not have anything on the 17th, but on October 31st, we will have um, a presentation at 1 o'clock from the Cuyahoga Department of De Developmental Disabilities and some legislation. At 2 o'clock, we will convene with a joint committee with education for Say Yes to Education presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, Education Environment Sustainability meets 3 o'clock on the 17th, Wednesday to hear the items referred from today's agenda. Excellent. Mr. Vice yeah. yeah, uh, Public Works Committee will be uh, a meeting on the 17th as well. It's regularly, regularly scheduled time to address the items this, this afternoon. Is there any other miscellaneous business from council? If not, our meeting is adjourned. Dale, you're good for the 17th meeting?